Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see diamagnetic anisotropy. And this uh, video is based on a question that has come in a TNPSC examination for uh, junior scientific officers uh, in the Tamil Nadu Forensic Science Subordinate Services. So let's see the question first. The question says, from HABCD, which will resonate at downfield? So there are four protons that are spelt out here. So the question is, which of them will be seen more at downfield? In the sense, which is most de-shielded among them? So we would have studied about shielded and de-shielded protons in our fundamentals of NMR spectroscopy. I am just showing the uh, chemical shift uh, values here, the um, representation here. And then the TMS is used as a reference compound. And any value that is seen at smaller chemical shift value is said to be upfield. Any value that is seen at a higher chemical shift value is called as downfield. And all protons that are seen at downfield are said to be de-shielded protons. And all protons that are seen in the upfield are said to be shielded protons. So shielding versus de-shielding, I suppose you know the meaning. That is any proton that is shielded from the external magnetic field is said to be a shielded photon. Any proton that is de-shielded or it is free for exposure to the external magnetic field, then it is said to be a de-shielded proton. In the sense, it needs more frequency or energy uh, for uh, the proton to come into resonance and that is the reason why it is seen at a downfield. Whereas in case of a shielded proton, it is experiencing uh, it is shielded and so it will experience only less of the external magnetic field and as a result only very little frequency external frequency is needed and so the chemical shift values appear at upfield or at lower values. This is the difference between a shielded and de-shielded protons. So here there are four protons that are given here and then we have to understand uh, which of them are shielded, which of them are de-shielded. So, what are the factors that causes shielding and de-shielding? So, if we see the factors that are causing shielding and de-shielding, the first and foremost is the electronegativity factor. The next one is called as magnetic anisotropy. So, in this uh, video, I am going to discuss about magnetic anisotropy. So, what is this magnetic anisotropy? So, uh, as I told you, the proton, if it is able to experience the external magnetic field, then it is said to be de-shielded. If the proton is masked, if the proton is hidden from experiencing the magnetic field, it is said to be shielded. So a shielded proton will experience less magnetic field and so it needs only very less external magnetic field to come into resonance. Whereas if a proton is experiencing more magnetic field, then it is said to be de-shielded because it is uh, nascent and it is vacant uh, for the magnetic field to be experienced. And as a result, external magnetic field also is given more. But then in case of an alkene, this de-shielding or this proton being exposed to the magnetic field is a different story altogether. Here it is not that the proton is uh, uh, not experiencing. So when we are saying the proton is experiencing more magnetic field, what happens is the electronic environment around the proton is removed by some other group. So when you are talking about uh, electronegative groups, the presence of electronegative groups de-shields the proton. But here in this magnetic anisotropy, it is not electronegative parameter that is causing de-shielding. Please remember, I repeat again, in case of alkenes, it is not electronegativity that is causing de-shielding of the proton. It is magnetic anisotropy. So now we are going to see what is this magnetic anisotropy. So the first and foremost, when a external magnetic field is applied, this external magnetic field also causes the electron to experience this magnetic field. So electron by itself like the proton is also a charged species. So it will also start to have its own magnetic field. So the pi electrons of the double bond will start to experience its own magnetic field. And as a result, they start to circulate in a magnetic environment. 
okay so this circulation of this magnetic environment is very very important parameter the protons are actually in the path of this field or this circulating magnetic field is experienced by this proton because it is in the path of the magnetic field so what happens to the proton is that it is not only going to experience the external magnetic field b not but it will also experience the magnetic field caused by the electron its own electron so it has two fields one external magnetic field number two the magnetic field of its own pi electrons so together it has an added magnetic field so when it is having an added magnetic field the external magnetic field that we are going to apply will be also a higher value than the applied magnetic field so because we are giving a higher frequency you see the protons will be observed at a higher chemical shift value that is it will be shifted down field and it is a d shielded proton it appears it is appearing along with the d shielded protons and here it is not because of electronegativity but it is because of magnetic anisotropy so now let us see the spectrum again there are four protons that are given here so in these four protons we see here uh, the the proton that is spelt out here which is near uh, this is the first cell okay the first cell then i put number 2 i put number 3 and i put number 4 okay so the proton that i had put as one is actually the alkyl proton and this proton and this proton is due to uh, the shielded and it is a shielded proton because um, the uh, surrounding groups are uh, shielding the proton or the electrons are not withdrawn out and as a result the proton is shielded from the external magnetic field and so the value appears between 1 and 2 now in this structure which we have the hd and hc are actually ch2 protons methylene protons so these methylene protons these methylene protons are uh, protons which are you know like the al alkyl proton okay and when you see between d and c of course there is one more here there are two protons here they are ignored in this particular structure okay so i am not going to talk about them so when compared to d and c so these two are similar or they appear at similar regions because they are next to an electron withdrawing carbonyl group so the carbonyl group we know is polarizing group wherein carbon uh, will have a partial positive charge and oxygen could have a partial negative charge so this is the capacity of the carbonyl group so because there is a carbonyl group there these two protons are not like a shielded proton but they are slightly d shielded that is why you see value at around between 2 and 3 so the proton due to hd it is a neighbor of the carbonyl like this like 2 so it could be seen around 2 2 to 3 similarly uh, of, of course we did not talk about this so actually if it was spelt out this but these protons these methylene protons would have appeared here and of course this hc proton also though it is a little far off from there would appear similar to that of this second proton so you see here when compared to ha and hb hc and hd are methylene protons that is why they are seen at around 2 between 2 and 3 okay but then you see the ha and hb they are actually vinylic protons that is alkene cis protons okay so they are something like this so these vinylic protons because of magnetic anisotropy which i told you now will be experiencing both their own electronic field and then the external field and so are observed at a higher value around 5 to 6 so ha and hb will be found between uh, 5 to 6 or 5 to 7 
So now the question, our question was that from A, B, C and D, which will resonate at downfield? So there is no problem with the, the others, H, D and C, because they are methylene, they are at a much lower value upfield. We know H, A and H, B are going to be downfield. Now the question is, is it H, A or is it H, B? Usually students will uh, say H, A because it is between the carbonyl group and an alkene group. But actually speaking, there is an extended conjugation that is that can be seen here, which is like this. And as a result, the electron density is pulled away from HB like this. And that is the reason why you see HB will be more deshielded than HA. HA doesn't have that kind of an extended conjugation except for magnetic anisotropy. HA will not experience any other field. So, HA will appear around 6, but HB will be the most deshielded. HB will appear around 7, whereas HA will appear around 6. So, the most deshielded will be HB. So, the answer is HB. And that is why you see it at the downfield. Thank you.